Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All coming to you from Vancouver with Fully Charged Live. As you can tell, it's pretty late at night back there. I uh, actually had a video all queued up for tomorrow, but I'm going to preempt it with this one because I think it's really interesting. This is going to be very much off the cuff. I'm just doing this <laughs> like pretty much you know like as I as I read this I was having dinner on my own I was supposed to have dinner with a few friends and things didn't work out hopefully it'll work out for tomorrow night but anyway I ended up going to this really lovely Mediterranean restaurant Hydra and um I was just, you know, having a glass of wine and I was looking at the latest news of the day and I saw this excerpt from uh, Walter Isaacson's latest book, Elon Musk. This is on Axios. Of course, I will leave a link to the article in the description so you can look at it on your own. But I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. This book is going to be absolutely stunning. It's going to be such a treasure trove when it comes out. So this is just a little tiny piece of it that's coming out here. But anyway, we'll see. Yeah, it's coming out September 12th, which is just... Uh, Gosh, four days from now. <laughs> so can't wait to see that when it comes out. I have no idea how I'm going to find the time to read it all in the middle of everything else, but I'm going to have to figure it out. So anyway, we have several things that are going on here. The um, the brainstorming of the robo taxi is the big thing and how Elon Musk is he could become very, very, um, what would you call it, <laughs> obsessive about things and stubborn about things, but also he is willing to change his mind. And that's, that's a lot of what this article talks about. A little piece of it, however, is something that I want to pat myself on the back on because I have been calling this, this video right here came out on J uh, July 10th of 2020. And look how... Man, my hair is so gray compared with what it was back then. <laughs> a little bit better of a set now that I had then. But anyway, um, I had been predicting and I'd done a design exercise. I basically said, if you take the sort of spec that Tesla had put out for the Cybertruck, and I kind of like, you know, referenced it. I said the car needs all of these things. And uh, uh, let's see here. Yeah, so here we have like a little bit more of a thing. But anyway, you know, all of these specifications, what would be the first principles way of making this vehicle? And I called a, a sort of Cybertruck looking thing and I designed it myself. And now this part, I don't believe is actually going to happen at this point, but I had said for this most space efficiency, the ideal situation would be to have the rear passengers face backwards so that you could have a more aerodynamic shape. I don't believe that's going to happen, but what I do think is going to happen is this. We're going to end up with an aluminum frame, and yes, this is just a quick render that I did. You know, I worked it out. Anyway, but you can see this render here, and the idea was that it was kind of Cybertruck themed. It was Cybertruck inspired. It was going to be stainless steel. It wasn't going to have paint, because paint is a huge pain in the butt if you're trying to build something for $25,000. So if you're trying to do a cheap car, it needs to be single motor, not dual motor. And so you put motors in the, just, you know, a motor in the back. It drives the rear wheels. You steer with the front wheels. You separate out all of that stuff. It becomes much simpler. You build a, a an exoskeleton or whatever they're doing with the Cybertruck now, a quasi-exoskeleton, quasi-body-on-frame type of design, and you um, you just coat it in, in stainless steel, and, and that's what you do. You don't have to deal with paint. You can manufacture it much more quickly, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, if this does come to pass, it looks like from the book that Franz von Holzhausen and, and Elon and others have been working on the design for a while. So I actually might have gotten there first, which is kind of interesting. So anyway, I will leave a link to this in the description as well, just so that you can verify that this came out on July 10th of 2020, so over three years ago at this point. And I think it's it's valid to, you know, to, to take a look at that and to say like, well, what did I get right? What did I get wrong? I'm sure I got a lot wrong. Again, this was a design exercise. This was going like, okay, if I go first principles and here's the specs of what a $25,000 Tesla needs to look like, what is this thing going to look like? And that was what I came up with. So it just worked out that way. Anyway, so let's go back to this. Um, you can see that they wanted to get a, a, a less expensive car, but Elon Musk was very much married to the idea of doing a robo taxi. He was all in on robo taxi. And what that means is no um, steering wheel, no accelerator, no brakes, no nothing. And he was very, very much behind that, right? So he wanted no steering wheel or pedals that could meet safety standards. And so he really, really fought for that. And so you can see here, it's, you know, what somebody forgets, you know, they, they, 
talked about all this stuff. What if somebody forgets to shut the door? That means the car has to shut its own door on its own. It needs to have a motorized door shut thing. And it, you know, what if you need to get into a gated community? It's got to have some sort of like arm or something that can push a button. What if it needs to take a ticket? All of these kinds of things are, you know, just there, there's things that you don't really have to deal with when you have a human driver, but all of a sudden you do have to deal with that when you have a robo taxi type of situation. So they worked on this, they worked on this, they worked on this. And what we get is, you know, we want to make sure we are accessing. So anyway, we've got this engineers push for safer conventional option while Elon Musk was saying that he wanted a all in on robo taxis. And this was August 18th. So just, you know, 13 months ago, not even 13 months ago here. And, and, you know, Franz and the others told him, we want to make sure we are assessing the risk with you. If we go down a path of having no steering wheel and full self-driving is not ready, <coughs> it's still not ready, we won't be able to put them on the road. He suggested that they make a car that had a steering wheel and pedals that could be easily removed. Basically, our proposal is to bake them right in right now, but remove them when we are allowed to. Musk shook his head. The future would not get here fast enough unless they forced it. Small ones, <laughs> funnel saws and persisted. We can remove pretty easily and design around. So he's like, we'll just make a tiny little steering wheel, etc. And so you can see here, Elon was very, very adamant about the fact that he did not want to have this in the vehicle. And so that's very interesting. Like, you know, he is an obstinate sort of person. He's like, this is the way it's going to be. You don't rise to fame like Elon has done without without being that kind of a person. I actually was just talking to people at Fully Charged Live today about how normal people do not change the world. A normal person is somebody who's go with the flow, they get a normal job, they go to work, they, they do their job and they're perfectly adequate at it and there's no problem with that. But you need those people at the very, very far ends of the bell curve to make changes in the world. That can be both for both good and bad. And you know, a lot of what people talk about Elon is they're like, well, he's got a lot of bad points as well, but it's like, yeah, okay, those bad points come with a lot of good points though. And so that's the thing to keep in mind. You need outliers in order to change the world. Normal people don't change the world. So. You know, it says he got into one of his very cold moods, and this is, you know, Walter Isaacson sitting in these meetings, and, and of course he would know. He said, let me be clear, this vehicle must be designed as a clean robo-taxi. We're going to take that risk. It's my fault if it Fs up, but we are not going to design some sort of amphibian frog that's halfway car. We are all in on autonomy. So, I mean, go him for one thing. So anyway, he's jazzed on this. He, you know, he's like, he's, he, um... He, he was talking about uh, instilling a sense of urgency. This will be a historically mega revolutionary product. It will transform everything. This is the product that makes Tesla a $10 trillion company. <laughs> People will be talking about this moment in 100 years. So this is his vision. His vision is that 100 years from now, business schools or other people will be talking about this moment in history. So, you know, it says he is very, very stubborn, obviously. And reality distorting is very interesting since, you know, Walter Isaacson has done a Steve Jobs, uh, you know, biography. And that certainly is what Steve Jobs was famous for was that reality distortion field. But here's an interesting thing. He said, but here's a lesser known trait. He could also change his mind. So he could take in arguments, recalibrate reassess the risks and that's what happened with the steering wheels so again we're talking about just a year ago right now as i record this at the end of the summer of 2022 after he made his pronouncements von holzhausen and others set about persuading him to cover his bet they knew how to do it in a non-challenging way so we brought him in new information that maybe he wasn't fully digesting in the summer, said Lars Moravi, who is Tesla, one of Tesla's top executives. He's engineering lead. Gosh, I can't remember his exact title. But anyway, even if self-driving vehicles were approved by regulators in the United States, he argued, it would be years before they were approved internationally. So it made sense to build a version of the car, at least with a steering wheel and with pedals. For years, they had talked about what should be Tesla's next generation offering, a small, inexpensive mass market car selling for around $25,000. Musk himself had teased the possibility in 2020, but then it put a hold on those plans. And over the next two years, he repeatedly vetoed the idea, which is really interesting, saying that the robo taxi would make the other car unnecessary, which is true if the robo taxi was a full-fledged beast at this point. Never, and this is really interesting because Franz, you know, <laughs> you can see how he's playing this game too. Nevertheless, von Holzhausen had quietly kept it alive as a shadow project in his design studio. Late in an, on a Wednesday evening in September of 2022, so just about exactly a year ago, Musk ensconced himself in his longtime haunt 
the windowless main conference room of the Fremont factory, Moravi and von Holzhausen had a few top members of the Tesla team in for a secret meeting. They presented data showing that in order for Tesla to grow at 50% a year, it needed to have an inexpensive small car, which is very reasonable. There's only so much market for the more expensive Model Y, Model 3, and then of course the S and X as well. We convinced him that if we could build these factories and have this platform, we could churn out both robo taxis and a $25,000 car all in the same vehicle architecture. So the basic idea is you build the robo taxi and then you put in some additional stuff to make it drivable. And, and that makes sense. And that's, you know, I've, a lot of us have actually talked about in the, uh, in the past several years. After the meeting, Musk and I sat alone in the conference room. I assume that means Isaacson himself. And it was clear that he was unenthusiastic about the $25,000 car. It's really not that exciting of a product, he said. His heart was in transforming transportation through robo-taxis, but over the next few months, he got increasingly more enthusiastic. At a design review session one afternoon in February of 2023, so about a half a year ago, von Holzhausen put models of the robo-taxi and the $25,000 car next to each other in the studio, and here's the important little line here from my little thing. Both had a Cybertruck futuristic feel, and so let's go back to my design here. Cybertruck futuristic feel in a small car. So again, Pat on the back for me. <laughs> anyway, Musk loved the designs. When one of these comes around a corner, he said, people will think they are seeing something from the future. And that's exactly what the Cybertruck is doing now. But you put that in a smaller package and you make it a less expensive vehicle. And we suddenly are looking at something. And, I, and normally, if Tesla was not currently making the Cybertruck and figuring out how to manufacture something in stainless steel, I would say that this would be a terrible idea. But they're already proving this. They're using the much more expensive Cybertruck to figure out how to do this manufacturing process. And they can then transfer that information, just like the Model 3 transferred to the Model Y and made the Model Y much easier to make than the Model 3 was because they'd figured out a lot of the techniques. You've got that same sort of benefit. You've got that synergy between the Cybertruck and the potential Cybertruck looking version of the Model 2 or the next gen vehicle. It's not the Model 2, but whatever they call it. The new mass market vehicle, both with a steering wheel and with as a robo taxi, became known as the next generation platform. Musk initially decided that Tesla would build a new factory in northern Mexico, 400 miles south of Austin, designed from the ground up to build such cars, which we know is actually happening. It would use a completely new manufacturing method that was highly automated. But a problem soon arose in his mind. He had always believed that Tesla Tesla's design engineers needed to be located right next to the assembly line rather than allowing manufacturing to be done at a remote location, which would be the thing in Mexico. That way, engineers can get instant feedback on how to design innovations that would both improve the car and make it easier to manufacture. This was particularly true for a completely new car, obviously, and manufacturing process. But he realized he would have trouble getting his top engineers to locate, relocate to the new factory. Tesla engineering will need to be on the line to make it successful and getting everyone to move to Mexico is never going to happen. In fact, Austin, Texas was a whole battle to move from Fremont because, you know, Elon basically had to ask his senior engineers, what is the other city or cities in the United States that you would be willing to move from to from the, the, the Central California, Southern California type of environment where you are? And about the only thing people agreed on was Austin that fit the bill for everything else. So clearly, you know, you have to you have to take account of the fact that if your employees won't move to Monterey, Mexico, it's just not going to happen. So anyway, in May of 2023, which is just a couple of months ago, he decided to change the initial build location for the next gen cars and robo taxis to Austin. And this could actually explain a whole bunch of things where his own workshop and that of his top engineers would be right next to the new high speed ultra automated assembly line. So. A real quick aside here, if you recall, the shareholder meeting was in May this year. Generally speaking, it's been in August, somewhere around the beginning of August every year. And everyone was like, why the hell has the, the, the shareholder meeting been moved to May? Remember that this is in Giga, Texas. And everybody was like, oh, it has to do with the Cybertruck and they don't want to mess up the assembly line and they don't want to talk about it and have a meeting right when they're thinking about doing the launch. But another big piece of this puzzle very well could have been that they had some sort of prototype line that they were already working on, thinking about, you know, messing around with to do this new next gen platform. And if that's the case, that would have been even more, or at least even if they didn't have it there by May, they were 
you know, scheduling to begin development on it in June, July, August. So that would be exactly the reason why Tesla would not want to have people there during the August time frame, which they normally do. So we've got then in that case, we've got both the Cybertruck and this next gen platform, both of which would be directing Tesla to do the shareholder meeting as soon as possible and not wait until the normal time to do that. So that helps to explain the reason why the shareholder meeting was so early this year. Anyway, throughout the summer of 2023, he spent hours each week working with his team to design each station of the line, finding ways to shave milliseconds off each step and process. Yes. And so remember the Cybertruck, he talks about 10 micron accuracy. Here we're talking about milliseconds and maybe Isaacson is exaggerating a little bit, but I don't think so. I, you know, Elon is very, very concerned about all of that kind of stuff. As he, Elon, had in the past with both Tesla cars and SpaceX rockets, he knew there was something just as important as the design of the project, the design of the manufacturing system that would build the products at high volume. And that is really, really crucial. So here we go. We've got an entire article that's a a little tiny excerpt from Isaacson's book, which just shows us how amazing and how sort of of the moment all of this stuff is. You know, you think about this, in, in, if you go to the future in 10 years and maybe this is a huge success or maybe it's a huge flop, I don't know. I'm predicting it will be a success. But you know, you go 10 years into the future when you're thinking like, wow, they knew exactly what they were doing. All of this stuff was set in stone. These people were so brilliant. It's like, no, these they're making it up as they go. They're figuring it out every day. They're working on it. This is the way reality works. You don't just know the answers to all of these things ahead of time. Just like with full self-driving, I talk about that all the time. They bump into trees, you know, it's that dark forest in the night. They're bumping into trees, stubbing their toes, doing all of this stuff until they figure out how to get to the answer. And in retrospect, it looks obvious how you got to the answer, but as you're doing it, you don't really know how you're doing it. So I think it's just fascinating to look, to get an inside look at all of this stuff. And as we see the next gen platform come out, you know, it's, they, they clearly have models already. Obviously, Franz put out the models of both of them and they're probably, you know, reasonably big so you can open them up and look inside. So they clearly have those models, but also clearly we are not going to get to see them for a while. But fascinatingly enough, they are not going to be initially manufacturing these. They will probably have a pilot production line in Texas along with the Model Y and the Cybertruck, they will have a, a next gen platform that they will be building at the same time. And they certainly have a lot of room there. And then in the meantime, they will build the Giga Mexico factory to mass produce this after they've got the whole design thing worked out. So that's the kind of methodology they're going to work on. But that was not the original intent. The original intent was to go with Mexico to build it. Now they've kind of altered that. They've altered the design of the vehicle. Elon has changed his mind. A lot of stuff moves behind the scenes. So I think it's a really, really fascinating insight. And again, this is just a couple of pages from Walter Isaacson's book. So I can't wait to read this thing when it comes out. I'm really, really excited. I hope they have an audio book that comes out along with the, uh, the, the hardback copy or whatever, or the Kindle copy, because I really, I don't know how I'm going to have the time to actually read it, whereas if I can listen to it, I can hear it a lot faster. Anyway, we will see what happens. But in the meantime, I think this was just fascinating stuff. And again, if you want to look back at my little video that I did, you know, three years and two months ago now, uh, I, uh, I'll put the link in the description so you can go check it out and you can verify that indeed I was thinking about that. And I'm sure I got a lot of things wrong, but if I got the stainless steel sort of cyber trucky looking aspect of it correct i will definitely give myself a pat on the back in retrospect so anyway i hope everybody has is having a lovely evening slash morning slash whenever you watch this thing and let me know in the comments what you think about all of this stuff and whether there are other design opportunities or things that you can think about and other possibilities for how this could work and how this revelation of how elon and his team work you know, what, what, what that lets you, the insights that it lets you know about and whether this makes you more interested and less interested in investing in Tesla, the stock and everything. I don't know. Anyway, all of that kind of stuff. Definitely let me know in the comments. Do the whole like and subscribe. Check out the merch store. Check out the merch store. <laughs> Check out my cyber truck. That was cool stuff. And also, by all means, if you're looking at purchasing a Tesla, use my link in the description to purchase one and you get $500 or $1,000 off, depending on what you're buying. All right. In the meantime, I will see everybody in the next video. Bye bye.